Hello, it's Scott Manley here. With that Oppenheimer movie putting big bangs on screens and bums on seats, there's a lot of interest in nuclear tests. And, of course, there's been a whole lot of people talking about the biggest nuclear explosions ever, but I'd actually like to talk about the other end of the scale. You see, it sort of came to my attention that there are some movie effects which have higher explosive energy than the smallest nuclear weapons. And I'm not talking about Oppenheimer. According to the Guinness Book of Records, the climax of the movie Spectre involved a practical effect that used 33 kilos of explosives and about 8,500 litres of kerosene. And if you do the math on that, uh, the energy comes out to be equivalent to about 60 tonnes of TNT. And that is about three times bigger than this nuclear test, Operation Hard Tack Fig, which clocked in at only 20 tons, not kilotons or megatons, tons of TNT. This was a small tactical weapon. So this early test was probably the XW-51 prototype developed by Lawrence Livermore Labs, but eventually the project would be taken over by Los Alamos to create the W-54. And that would be the tiny warhead, less than 25 kilograms, used in the Davy Crockett man-portable nuclear weapons system. This was supposed to be shot at uh, groups of enemy tanks, and it didn't really kill with the blast. It actually emitted so much neutron radiation that it would just kill the crews in their tanks, primarily. Now, 20 tons was the design yield for the W-54 in this application, but there were actually variants of the warhead that used other techniques to get more yield out of the same size package. Things like injecting deuterium and tritium into the core to cause a little bit of fusion and uh, boost the neutron output. They got the yield of this thing up to something like one kiloton for the most powerful version of the special atomic demolition munition. That's basically the backpack nuke that would be carried behind enemy lines by special forces. They would place it next to a dam and, you know, blow things up. But look... We're going in the wrong direction here. We want to talk about small explosions. And it turns out that building a very small nuclear weapon was very difficult. And they had a few problems. One of which was the Hamilton test, which had a measured yield of 1.2 tons. Yes, there are plenty of conventional munitions which have bigger booms than this. We're pretty sure this was a fizzle, that is, it was supposed to have a much higher yield, but it didn't quite work out the way they expected. This was detonated on a 50-foot tower, and you can see a few tanks and stuff placed around nearby to measure the effects. Unfortunately, none of the footage shows what happened to them afterwards, as far as I can tell. But this was a properly instrumented test with high-speed cameras, and you can see that tower. Still kind of standing, but, you know... Truthfully, on this time scale, gravity takes a little while to start, you know, acting. But also, unlike the bigger explosions, this initial fireball is very non-spherical. And there's a bunch of reasons why this might be. First of all, this was a fizzle. Maybe the, you know, the implosion wasn't sufficiently spherical and the explosion that resulted had some directional component. But also... It was kind of wimpy and maybe it had a hard time escaping the shot cap at the top. Maybe those plywood walls were just too much for this nuclear weapon. And the robustness of the cabin is more evident in this angle when you see the explosion blooming its way around the walls of the cabin to escape. So yeah, I think this is the smallest nuclear explosion that we have good, you know, high-speed camera footage for. But... There's other interesting low-yield explosions from the history of nuclear tests. First up, there's the Juno test. So the bomb is placed in that pile of dirt there because this is what's called a one-point safety test. The yield on this was about 1.7 tonnes. And that's more than they would have liked because a one-point safety test is where you assume that a phantom electrical spark triggers one of your detonators and the explosion starts, but because it doesn't have that perfectly synchronized explosion across the surface of the device, the implosion doesn't correctly compress the material. But that doesn't mean the material doesn't get compressed at all. In this case, it clearly got compressed enough that it generated a very small nuclear yield, but a long way short of the 5 kiloton yield that the full perfectly synchronized detonation would have produced. 
So previously there had been a set of tests known as Operation Plumbob. You might have heard of that because that's where the famous uh, interstellar manhole cover story comes from. But one of those tests was called Coulomb B, where they performed a small test to show that a one-point detonation would not generate a substantial nuclear explosion. That clearly didn't happen. The measured yield on this safety test was 300 tons, which is about 300 tons more than they actually wanted. So they tried again with Coulomb C, and uh, yeah, that didn't work either. That got a yield of 500 tons. And also one of the weirdest looking explosions I've seen. All the sources say that this is supposed to be a surface detonation, but it sure looks to me like uh, a lot of the energy was directed upwards into a plume as if it was inside a shaft. Another energetic safety test was Donna Anna, and this one was detonated on a balloon. That's what that shape is above it. That's kind of a, a unique look to have this sort of... It looks like a mushroom cloud sitting on top of the fireball. The yield on this was only 37 tons, but still a lot more than they wanted. Now, since we're on balloons, let's talk about another shot called Wrangle. And the cool thing about this is the sun is in the frame and you can see how bright that flash was relative to the sun. Unfortunately, this was a fizzle. This was only about 100 tons of TNT. They were expecting more like 5 kilotons. Since we're on the subject, this is what it should have been like. This was uh, the Sanford test. Now, the one th cool thing about this is, again, this is a balloon shot. Look at the shape of that fireball. It's like the balloon has spread itself over the top. This is a nuclear fireball wearing a hat. But yeah, that was a large yield, you know, a proper successful test. If we're going to talk about small tests, if we're going to talk about fizzles, there's a couple that I really want to mention, and that is one called Upshot Knothole Ruth. So you can tell that they expected this to be a lot bigger than it was because of the camera framing. This was the first weapon designed by the Lawrence Livermore Labs. They had this idea that they could reduce the amount of fissile material by mixing in deuterium. They would have uranium hydride as their uh, fissile material. The idea is the deuterium would moderate the neutrons a little, increasing the cross-section of the uranium and therefore making uh, the critical mass lower. And I think they also thought the deuterium could undergo fusion and therefore boost the energy of the weapon a bit more. They thought this might have a yield of about 3 kilotons. And so the test range rules required that they put it on something like a 300 foot to uh, tall tower. And if you look at the first frames, you can see how tall that tower is. But you can also see how small that fireball is and how it doesn't even really reach the ground. Uh, this was something of an embarrassment. They only got a yield of about 200 tons of TNT. I mean, sure, that's pretty formidable, but as it happens, it wasn't enough to destroy the tower. So yeah, they were left with this, you know, half-standing tower. Apparently, Los Alamos cheekily asked, do you mind if we use the tower after you? But the scientists continued to work on their idea and tried again with Ray, this time with a 100-foot tower, at least ensuring that the tower was erased by the blast. Scientists expected that their improvements would raise the yield to 500 to maybe 1,000 tons of TNT, but when they measured the effect, it was only 200 tons once again. The moderating effect of the deuterium effectively slowed the neutrons down too much and quenched the reaction. So this whole idea was, they, they gave up on it. And that was just the beginning of Livermore's fizzle problem. While Los Alamos was accidentally making Castle Bravo three times the energy it should be, Livermore's first foray into thermonuclear weapons, while well, one was a wet device with liquid deuterium, that was cancelled because it wasn't needed anymore. And then their innovative uh, morning star design that was used for the Castle Coon shot, uh, well, that only generated 100 kilotons rather than the three megatons they expected, and all the test cameras were pointing the wrong way. So last year when Lawrence Livermore Labs announced that they had made the world's smallest nuclear explosion in their giant uh, laser system, this was part of a long history of making small nuclear explosions. Now, there are a lot of tests that are listed as having an even lower yield than Hamilton, but many of those are underground. Many of those are safety tests, which were actually aiming for zero yield. We don't really have good footage of any of these things.
The last atmospheric test the US ever carried out was Operation Sunbeam Little Feller, and that was an oil stock, off-the-shelf Davy Crockett device used in a military exercise uh, before various dignitaries. But there are two famous incidents where a nuclear weapon, uh, well, arguably had a lower yield than anything I've talked about so far. This is, of course, a nuclear pit designed for a bomb with a chain reaction happening inside it and releasing energy not measured in tons, not in kilograms, but in milligrams. The two cases of accidental criticality with the Demon Core, uh, where Harry Daglin and Lewis Slotin both received fatal doses of radiation. And if you do the, the math and measurements, turns out that the energy released was about you know a few joules of energy, and that is equivalent to milligrams of TNT. Thankfully, we don't have any uh, footage from any of these incidents. Uh, but I'm going to leave you with this comparison between the Trinity test and the Hamilton. That is a factor of 20,000 in terms of energy. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.